Hey folks, this is Riker with an Overwatch Doomfist video. The too long didn't watch version of this video is that signs are pointing towards Doomfist releasing in the near future. Blizzard time, of course. I've been meaning to make a Doomfist video for a very long time, months now, and I figured I better get to it before he releases. Which, as per some data mined files on the latest patch on the test server, may be soon. Reddit user Venxa Ven -za? posted this image, which shows what appears to be the Numbani payload, which carries the Doomfist gauntlet in a glass case. But you can see what appears to be broken glass around the case, suggesting the gauntlet has been stolen. Now back in October, game director Jeff Kaplan said that a new hero was coming soon, with a second hero in the works that would release in 2017. The first hero he mentioned was Sombra, as expected, and the second has been speculated to be Doomfist. This is what Kaplan said back in October about the second hero coming. We also have another hero prototype that we're extremely happy with right now. This one is in very internal developer form. We're using all placeholder models and effects and animations just to prove that the hero is fun. But we feel like we found another really great Overwatch hero that will see the light of day probably sometime next year. So the first time we heard about Doomfist was in the very first cinematic reveal of Overwatch. The one in which Reaper and Widowmaker tried to steal the Doomfist gauntlet. Back then, Blizzard hadn't intended to make Doomfist a playable character, or even be a big part of the story. His name was really just a throwaway line. That's Doomfist's gauntlet! Oh man, they said he could level a skyscraper. And his gauntlet was just a MacGuffin, a plot device. Since then, Blizzard decided to expand on the idea of Doomfist and give him a bigger role in the story, even discussing the possibility of making him a playable hero. While they didn't outright confirm that Doomfist would become a playable hero, it's clearly on their idea board and it doesn't seem to so much be a question of if, but rather when. Now, Blizzard explained in an interview with PC Gamer that Doomfist is a generational character. In other words, there's been more than one Doomfist. The map Numbani is where we gather most of the rest of our Doomfist information. We see this set of three posters. The original Doomfist, the Savior, the second Doomfist, the Scourge, and now the third Doomfist, the Successor. What you'll notice here is that beneath their titles you see their names. The first name, Adabu Nagumi, is Swahili and literally translates to Doom Fist. The second name, Akinjide Adeyami, is a Yoruba name. The Yoruba people are mostly from Nigeria and are one of the largest ethnic groups in Africa. The first part of the name, Akinjide, is a boy's name that means Strong One Has Returned. As for Adeyemi, that means The Crown Fits Me. And clearly the crown here is either the Doomfist itself or the title. Now the third name is written in the Omnic language. This combined with what appear to be some very inorganic lines in the silhouette around his face and head suggests that the third Doomfist may be an Omnic. The other two Doomfists appear to be African and their names reflect this. If this Doomfist were human, why would his name be written in Omnic? It could possibly be because Doomfist may be from Numbani, a fictional city in Africa near Nigeria. Numbani is known as the City of Harmony, in which humans and Omnics coexist peacefully and as equals. You can see Omnic riding everywhere throughout the city, and any human locals raised in Numbani are no doubt fluent in Omnic. So it's not at all unlikely for a human born and raised in West Philadelphia in Numbani who truly believed in equality between humans and Omnics to write his name in the Omnic language. Now, great efforts have been made to try to decipher the Omnic script, but we've ultimately been unable to decode Doomfist's Omnic name. So if the third Doomfist is actually human, then those inorganic lines we were talking about would either be armor of some kind or he might be a cyborg. The cyborg theory isn't all that far-fetched when you take a look at his Doomfist gauntlet which seems more integrated into his body than the first two. In fact, what hero could better reflect the ideals of Numbani, of human and Omnic coexisting, than a cyborg? That said, when you play Genji on Numbani, Genji expresses how much he feels he doesn't even fit in here, so... There's that. Even here, I feel an outcast. 
So the Doomfist Gauntlet was originally being kept at the Overwatch Museum, but it's being transported to the Numbani Heritage Museum for the city's Unity Day celebration. Clearly, Doomfist is an important part of Numbani history, for better or for worse. Given the first Doomfist was known as the Savior, and his depiction is decidedly heroic, he's likely to have been a hero in the region during the Omnic Crisis. Numbani itself was founded after the Omnic Crisis. As for the Scourge, he's depicted in a clearly villainous way. You know, if his name wasn't already a dead giveaway. There's what appears to be a mushroom cloud behind him, and that phrase comes to mind once again. They said he could level a skyscraper. Now, Winston is purported to have defeated Doomfist and claimed his gauntlet. That's how it got into the museum in the first place. Of the first two Doomfists, it seems more likely that Winston defeated the Scourge, and his gauntlet is the one that most closely resembles the one in the museum, which is identical to the one you see in-game on the Nubani payload. The first Doomfist gauntlet seems like little more than elaborate brass knuckles. The second is clearly some kind of power gauntlet like we saw in the cinematic. And the third seems like it may be an entire arm. Now the hiccup here is that the Scourge is wielding the gauntlet in his left hand. This is in conflict with the gauntlet we see in the museum and on the Numbani payload, which is clearly a right-handed gauntlet. This is definitely an issue, but we can chalk it up to artistic interpretation. In order to more clearly show on the poster that the Scourge is a villain, the artist likely chose to have him facing the opposite direction as the savior. Note how almost everything about the way they chose to depict him is in opposition to the first Doomfist. He has his back to us instead of his front. His fist is raised in the air instead of facing down. And his head is slightly down instead of slightly raised. The overall colors are cold instead of warm. You get the idea. Remember, these aren't pictures. These are drawings. These are artistic depictions. I don't think the Scourge posed for a poster photo shoot. This is art, and the purpose of art is to convey a message, a story, an emotion, not to be 100% factually accurate. They could have also just had him facing the opposite direction simply because it looks better than to have three people all facing the same direction. Now, the Overwatch visual sourcebook refers to the gauntlet in Nubani as Quote, the gauntlet of the infamous Doomfist. This further cements the idea that this gauntlet belonged to a villainous Doomfist. And to remove any doubt whatsoever, Anubani in the Defender spawn room, the one that's closest to the payload destination, you hear a recording for the museum say the following. This confirms that the gauntlet belonged to the Scourge, the second Doomfist, and the use of the word infamous clearly denotes that he is regarded as a villain in Numbani. Also, Blizzard has outright stated that Numbani is currently under threat by, quote, the villainous hero Doomfist. So we know that there is a Doomfist who is still active, who is a villain, and is thus likely to either be the Scourge or the successor. Now, the silhouette of the successor closely parallels the savior. Remember when we were talking about the visual depiction? Head up, facing towards us, gauntlet down. It's the same heroic pose as the savior. The symbol behind him, a fist with a starburst behind it, signifies to me strength, power, authority, even protection maybe. It is slightly ominous, just slightly dictatorial maybe kind of a little propaganda ish but remember it was artists that chose to depict it this way the spikes on the shoulder are typically more villainous than heroic but overall it seems this doomfist is more likely to be a protector of the people rather than a destroyer that said he can be a protector of the people and still be a villain in the story not everything is black and white and someone could be opposed to overwatch and its goals or methods without being a bad person in fact, I would expect this Doomfist to fall into that category. A villain to Overwatch, but someone with a goal that the audience can sympathize with. The fact that this Doomfist is shown in silhouette highly suggests that if a playable Doomfist character were added to the game, it would be the successor. The silhouette is a way of teasing the character without outright revealing him. He's also possibly just a silhouette because his true identity is an unknown to the people. He may be a mysterious character, and no one's gotten a really good look at him. In fact, Doomfist's reveal may happen in the real world at the same time as it happens 
in the game world. Now, there's some evidence to suggest that Doomfist may be affiliated with Talon in some way. Again, in that opening cinematic, Reaper and Widowmaker, known Talon agents, are trying to retrieve the Doomfist gauntlet. They may just be going after it because it's a powerful weapon, or Doomfist is affiliated with Talon, perhaps even its leader, and he wants his gauntlet back. There's even a voice line that was datamined in-game in which Reaper says, Doomfist should do his own dirty work. This suggests that Reaper is doing Doomfist's dirty work, which is something that a subordinate typically does for a superior. Is this dialogue line intended to be used on Nubani for the team trying to steal the gauntlet, the defending team? But back to the broken glass. What could this model tell us? Could this model be for an upcoming Doomfist reveal cinematic in which he retrieves his gauntlet? Or simply an update to Numbani once Doomfist is revealed? This wouldn't be the first time that Blizzard has modified a map to reflect one of the cinematic shorts. Almost a year ago, Watchpoint Gibraltar was updated to show a broken window in Winston's office. And it was only a month later that the recall short went live showing how that glass was broken. On Hanamura, you can see signs of the fight between Hanzo and Genji in the Dragon's short. Hanzo's arrow over here, Hanzo's arrow in the floor, uh, the damaged lantern, Genji's shuriken. There are a couple more of these little easter eggs on other maps, but you get the idea. Basically, many of these maps are important to the lore of Overwatch in some way. And for some maps, the lore only became known publicly after the map was released. For instance, the story behind the Dorado map only became fully known once the Sombra ARG came to a close, and we've covered that extensively in the past. Let's take a look at Route 66, for example. The story behind that map is that McCree's old criminal organization, the Deadlock Gang, blew up a bridge causing a train to fall, and that train was carrying a big bomb that the gang wanted to steal. So the payload on that map is the Deadlock Gang carrying that bomb back to their headquarters, back to their secret hideout. The defenders on that map represent Overwatch trying to stop them. So when you play on Route 66, that's the story that you're playing through. It's a reenactment of that event. Similarly, the story of Numbani might be a reenactment of someone, maybe Overwatch, escorting or trying to escort the Doomfist Gauntlet safely to the museum with Doomfist and his gang trying to intercept and steal the gauntlet. Regardless, we do know that Doomfist will have a role to play in the overarching story of Overwatch. The giant Sombra conspiracy that we covered in full detail in this video includes the Doomfist gauntlet somehow connected to Numbani, and note that the gauntlet also appears on the map Volskaya Industries, with this symbol 30 that is seen connected to Volskaya. What this could mean for now is completely unknown, but stay tuned as the mystery unravels. Now, as we're getting close to ending here, I just want to quickly mention that a new music track was datamined as well, posted by Dead Girl Dreaming to Reddit. Now we've heard this before, we've heard this in the original Overwatch reveal cinematic, the one in which Reaper and Widowmaker are stealing the gauntlet. Conflict. As the world teetered on the brink of anarchy, a new hope arose. Some people are speculating that this music has something to do with Doomfist, but it's more likely to be an event or a brawl of some kind. And in the video, this song was played, in the cinematic, this song was played while the announcer, the narrator, was talking about the Omnic Crisis, not about Doomfist. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the possibility of Terry Crews voicing Doomfist. There's a huge community demand for this. Terry Crews seems on board for this. There's arguably some evidence suggesting this may be happening or has happened, but we'll let you be the judge. It all started on November 16th when Terry Crews promoted an Overwatch free weekend on Facebook. Then the next day, someone on Reddit proposed that Terry Crews voice Doomfist. And the post exploded in popularity. People really wanted this. A few days later, on November 21st, Terry Crews replied with his real verified Reddit account saying he would love to play Doomfist. And it seemed like the story ended there. But almost a month later, on December 15th, 
The World of Warcraft in-game cinematic project director, Taron Gregory, tweeted this. That same day, Terry Crews himself confirmed that he was at Blizzard headquarters with this Facebook post. Love my visit with the geniuses at Blizzard Entertainment today and meeting the creators of one of my favorite games, Overwatch. Let's go. And things didn't end there. On January 4th, Terry posted this to Facebook. Who wants to hear me do the voice of Doomfist for real? The next day, Terry posted this. Just in case you happen to miss this, Terry plus Doomfist equals awesome. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson tweeted his endorsement of Terry Crews for Doomfist. At that point, a full month passed before we heard anything new on the matter. But then, a few days ago, February 3rd, we got a mock video audition from Terry posted to Facebook. This is Terry Crews for Doomfist. First came the savior, the scourge, the successor. Me? I'm the shit. I'm Doomfist. Get ready to hurt. I could totally level a skyscraper. Your face, my fists, your doom. Make room. Now, does all this mean that Terry will be voicing Doomfist? It looks like he wants to, the community wants him to, Blizzard likes him, and his visit to Blizzard headquarters may have been to record the Doomfist lines. It seems like it's something that could get wrapped up in a day. And all the social media stuff since then may just be Terry trying to hype us up for it, without spilling the beans. But when Blizzard hires voice actors, they get people that they know they'll have easy access to moving forward. This is so that they can record new voice lines for new events, for, no, for new hero interactions, even for new game integrations. Like there's a lot of Overwatch heroes that'll be going over to Heroes of the Storm. You know, back in the day, the female demon hunter in Diablo 3 was voiced by a different actress. And then, one day, out of nowhere, a patch came through and the voice actress was replaced. And everyone was upset. Everyone loved the old demon hunter voice actress. The new one was good too, but it was just like, why was this changed? And the new voice actress also voices Vala, the demon hunter in Heroes of the Storm. So we don't know why exactly they changed voice actress, but... It seems pretty obvious it was either due to money or availability and not because of the talent. Because, again, the old voice actress was adored. Now, Terry Crews is kind of a big deal. Blizzard would likely have to pay top dollar for him. Even if he's a fan of the game and would be willing to do it pro bono, Terry's someone who acts outside of a voice actor booth. So he's likely got a busy schedule. If he's going to be off filming a TV show or a movie, he can be away for quite a while, and if Blizzard needs him to come in to record some voice lines, are they going to chance that? I would love to hear Terry Crews voice someone in Overwatch, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. Now, the good news is that if Blizzard went with someone else for now, because Doomfist is a title that's been passed down from person to person, Blizzard could always in the future add a legendary skin that is the original Doomfist and have Terry Crews voice him. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment. And that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like this video, please share it. Check out these other videos. And subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Overwatch analysis. Battlecruiser Operational.